Sailor to my Yes. Like many commercial fisheries, Tim, the owner, prefers to grow his own trout for release into the lakes. That way, not only can he assure himself of the quality and health of the fish, it also enables him to stock the lakes daily. A trout fishery like this survives on the quality and size of its fish, and Tim has built up the reputation to what it is today. The fish in this pond are to be taken to the nine-acre Letchlade Lake. This is a trout master water and is stocked with fish up to 30 pounds in weight. So you'll know if you hook one of these lumps, that's for sure. A simple trawl net system enables the catching to be done by one man. By going about it in a slow, methodical manner, it enables the fish to be caught without damage and very little stress. From the pond, they are quickly netted and put into the water tank on the back of the truck. Then it's a very short ride of 300 yards when they are released again. Fish of this size are what anglers dream about. Here I am at Bushy Lee's Fishery in Letchlade, and this is the owner, Tim Small. How do you do, Tim? Morning, nice, nice to see you. you. Nice to meet you too. What a wonderful place you've got. Well, it's an absolutely lovely day, Easter Monday, and um, the sun's come out after a rather grey and drizzly weekend. When we arrived this morning by the shop, your other fishery, which is called? Letchlade Trout Fishery, Letchlade. which is stocked as a big fish water. Yeah, they were actually taking the fish out. You had some lumps there. Well, the average size is eight pound plus with fish well up into oh the 20 pounds. And um, we produce all our own fish, which is great. We can stock every single day of the year. And um, I've got my boys out on a bank holiday working hard and they'll be up here later on putting some brown trout in. So maybe you can get some pictures of that as well. That would be great to see. We'd love to see brown trout as well as rainbows in the fishery. And I noticed you had a few blues as well, but I gather that they're very slow growing and so you don't tend to stop we're them not, We're not doing them so much anymore. They're, they're a funny fish. Mm. They don't like being netted. Um, they're, they're all right being netted, but they, if, they, if anything's going to go wrong, they'll let you know. They're the ones that will go but wrong. But there are still a few in here. We're surprised they become quite resident and um, occasionally we get some absolute beauties out here, sort of five, six pounders. Lovely. And they go like stink. They're, they're really good fighting fish. There's some good resident brown trout in here and the average size we stock sort of two and a half to three and a half pounds. But we do get quite a lot of um, resident fish in here, which if you're clever, you can get onto those as well. Are you stream fed or spring fed? No, we're, um, this is a totally enclosed still water, but we're right on the water table. So it, the, as you can see, the water is absolutely gin clear. It is, it is very clear. And with this bright sunlight, you can see the bottom right behind us. I've also spotted perch and pike while I've been walking There around. are some big perch and pike in here and um, they don't do any harm and um, we, we like to see them, but catching a big five pound perch on a fly can be quite fun. Nice bit of diversity that would be. Little red buzzers they like taking. That's exactly what I've just put on the point. There we go. So we shall have to see. What sort of depth do you have here? It's, um, it's an old gravel pit, so it's pretty flat at the bottom, um, about 12 foot deep all over. There's one very, very big trench which runs from one end of the lake to the other, which they obviously yeah. use for dewatering when they were digging it back in the late 40s. And it's still there, and that holds quite a lot of fish, which is why the boats sit on top of that bit. So that's uh, probably about 30 yards out then? Yes. Yeah. You need a bit of a breeze to help me to hit that and still be able to fish it. Well, the nice thing is there's always a ripple on this water. Whatever happens, you're going to get a bit of a ripple. And I should think today, when it warms up a bit, you'll get fish on the top. There have been some very good evening rises recently with some sedges coming off. And, um, but at the minute, I should stick on buzzers and dams and nymphs, and when it warms up a bit, go on the surface. Oh, that's always useful information to have. It's my first time here. You know, which is why I need your advice. How long do you actually stay open in the evenings? Oh, until it, until it's dark up here, so you can stay here right until pitch black. So in the summer, you have very long working days. We kick people off at 10 o'clock in the summer. We need to go well, and clear up by then. I should think so. If they haven't caught by then, then it's too bad. One of the things I've always wanted to try for a full day is float tubing. And I've noticed, looking around the lake, you allow float tubing. We do, and we get, we get a lot of float tubers here. It, and it's great fun. You'll have to completely change the way you cast and you'll be surprised exactly how exhausted you are by the end of the day, but it's great fun. Come back for the Mayfly, that's a good time to be here and it's not so cold then. Well, thanks very much for that, Tim. That's, that's been marvellous. Good. Um, 
I'd love to talk longer, but I want to fish. All right, have a, have a great day, and we'll see you during the day. Thanks very much. Thanks, bye. Bye for now. It's the first time I've been here. It's a very attractive looking fishery. The water is gin clear and I'm expecting a good day, despite the bright sunshine. Lots could be going on. The fish here have a minimum size of two pounds stocking and we can expect odd fish possibly up to around eight pounds. And they will take small buzzers. One of my favorite methods of fishing, a little nymph. So I'm gonna carry on tackling up and then start fishing. Buzzers are the larva of the chironomid, which is our own non-biting midge. They start off as bloodworm on the bottom. They then pupate into what we call the buzzer nymph, which is what we intend to imitate today. Now, the water here is very clear. I will need to be able to turn the line over. I'm going to start off with a fairly long leader, maybe a little size 14 straight buzzer on a dropper, and on the point, a curved buzzer, because they're the ones that tend to live deeper down. We'll see how we get on fishing deep, but I've also been told that very often we can catch these fish just a foot below the surface. So there's a bit of experimenting to do. And to make sure, because it's so clear that my fly line turns over and my flies turn over, I'm gonna be putting on a tapered leader. This particular one is nine foot long, and it goes down to seven pounds at the point which will allow me to go to six pound line below that, which should be enough to cope with the fish, even though I've been told there are some in here up to 10 pounds. Now a lump like that would be a bonus today. I'm not promising it, but we'll try. All right, well, I just greased up the tip of the fly line with a cleaner floatant. Because I'm fishing buzzers, the takes could be very gentle, and I want to be able to use the tip of the fly line as an indicator, so I'll be able to watch it out there if it starts to move, then hopefully I can strike before the fish feels any resistance from the fly line. I'm going to start off with a small, straight black buzzer on the top dropper. A little size 14. This particular buzzer is made from a very thin layer of silk, black, over ribbed with stripped peacock curl and the little orange cheeks on the side represent the wing case of this hatching tyrannomid. This is a copolymer line, so it's going to float fairly near the surface. It has a little tinge of colour to it. We might have to change that later. Now the point fly. Basically what I want to try and do is fish at two depths. So I've got a copolymer here going to fluorocarbon which sinks. So I'm going to place my dropper here, I'm going to place my point fly rather, is going to be about four foot beyond it. That will allow me to fish two depths. This is a six pound tippet. So I've gone tapered leader down to seven, onto six, so that I'm maintaining a reduction in the diameter of the line which will help it all turn over. You notice I put my dropper on before I tie the knot. It's a little thing of mine. It ensures that I get the length of dropper that I want and that I come off of what I believe to be the correct side of the knot. That is to say, the trailing piece there down towards the point rather than attaching it to the top of the knot here, which causes a weakness. So and now another black buzzer. This is an epoxy buzzer, or super glue buzzer, as some people call them. Again, just plain silk, black, with a fine wire rib, and again, the orange wing cases. But this one is curved. As I say, the curved buzzers tend to be lower down in the water. I need to pull off enough line to actually allow me to cast in the first place. So I'm just going to get some line out on the water. That's it, about 20 foot, that'll get me started. Flies in my hand. Just roll cast that out. 
And you see the way that turned over beautifully, just landed in a nice straight line. I can see the tip. The main tapered leader is still on the surface, so that fly is fishing high. The other one has sunk and is fishing a lot deeper, so I have the two depths that I want. Well, I had a couple of hours around the other side, uh, just a few little plucks. So we thought we'd have a little change of spot. Moved right round to the opposite side. The wind's a bit tricky because it's blowing right to left, which means it's blowing the fly into me, so I have to be careful. But the conditions, to me, they said that the fish wouldn't be very close to the top. There haven't been many, if any, fish moving. So I've changed my setup. I've gone away from my floating tapered leader and I've gone for a straight leader of eight pound fluorocarbon to a top dropper of a size 14 buzzer. I've then put another five foot on and I'm gonna put a size 12 straight buzzer on the point. I've gone for a 12 because I want that to get down. I think with this bright sunshine, the fish are gonna be deeper than I was led to expect initially. So I'm gonna give it a go. I'm quite hopeful, fingers crossed. That's the point tied on. Let's see if my theory was right. And there's a tap. And that. Buzzer caught bushy leaves trout. Gonna be a bit careful, six pound leader. I've gone to a 14 on the dropper, which is what I think he's on. And a size 12 on the point. Because it's so bright, I decided to put on a much longer leader with a heavier fly on the point to get down. And it seems to have done the trick. I'm going to hold him out there for a second while I prepare my net. OK. Now I'm ready when he is. He doesn't want it yet. doesn't want it yet. It's certainly a fit fish. Look at that, it just doesn't want us, doesn't want to come in. I can tell already it's got a lovely tail on it. And there are the flanks glinting in the sun. So strong, if this is only a two pounder, imagine what the five and six and sevens they've got in here are like. This is the time, over to me. Say hello to Mike. <laughs> yes, wade in. Get my rod out of the way, and out comes the priest. I'll just fold it over to stop him flapping too much. The fish here are takers, uh, all fish caught to be killed, so this is going in the pan. Mwah, that's my prize. That's what I came for. Two pound trout, lovely condition. I've got several recipes I can try with this one. Not quite big enough for Gravidlax, but Trout Baleen, absolutely wonderful, marvellous. That's made my day, I'm happy now. In the bass bag. Ah, look at that. That's a brown riding close. Now I can see. There. Well, that's not the brown I was after. <laughs> a rainbow beat him to it. Okay, not a total monster, but a strong fish. A just going. Well, I think this one thinks he's a bonefish. <laughs> Off the reel then. Here we go. Well, it's good to have a bit of line back on the reel. Well, <laughs> 
I think he wants to head for the other lake. Point fly, the one that we put on just a few moments ago. Oh, he's shaking his head. When they start shaking their heads, they, you know, you've really got to worry about that hook working loose. But as long as I'm keeping the pressure on him, keep on the angle, keep on angling. All right, so we've got him towards the margins now. Time to get the net ready. There, look at that, there he goes. Come on. Oh. Oh. I don't know how Tim gets his fish so strong. There, our head up. On the side, over the net, come to Dighty. Lively, still lively, even after a fight like that. I've got my priest, so-called, because it administers the last rites. Thank you for your sport. One stun, two to kill, one for luck. Ah, they like the straight olive. Let's take that one out. Ooh, that was well hooked. This is one of the reasons I kill the fish before I take the hook out. When they're hooked as hard as this, I wouldn't want to distress them. In fact, this might even call for my tweezers. No, there we are, got it. Solid fish. That's it. As they say in racing terms, wade in. So this is what we call a bass bag. It's a nice, dark, porous material. What we do, get the bag wet, put the fish inside it. And I always prefer the ones with zips on, just in case it slips in the water and the fish float out. Roll it up, put it somewhere in the shade, and uh, it'll keep your catch fresh for the day. Don't use a carrier bag. You leave a trout in the sun, in a carrier bag, I guarantee you, if it's been there for three or four hours, it will stink to high heaven and won't really be fit to eat. Bass bag, well worth the money. I'm well out over that channel now. That's a tap. Yes, and we're in. Three taps. And when do you hit a fish that's going to do this to you? I'm down to the last three yards on the reel. Well, it was a long way out. But, uh, this bit of cloud coming over has really brought the fishery alive. A nice ripple. This morning it was flat, calm, hot. Not a cloud to be seen. Now we've got everything that we really wanted. Lots of action from the fish. If it keeps up like this, I'm going to have to go out and buy another ticket. So it's on a size 14 black buzzer. It's got a little rain, uh, little tele traffic light patch on its back, which is bright red. So it gives him some extra to spot. I've got to put a bit of side pressure on him, turn him around. That's it. I want him out in front of me that way, not heading into the sedges. Let's play him out in the open where there's no snags. In the net. <sighs> Wading. Here we are. 
Oh, that's a, seems a more solid fish than the others. About the same sort of size, maybe fractionally bigger. So I'm tapping them out. Beauty of these buzzers, but only are they lovely and slim and realistic. But because they're made with initially silk, then a coating of super glue, and then maybe a two thin coats of your wife's nail varnish, clear, set hard, you can catch half a dozen fish on this fly before it's damaged. And you can buy them in the shops either, either as super glue or epoxy buzzers. And at about 80p, that's very good value for money because they can last you for a long time as long as you don't lose them. I'm so keen to get back here and start fishing again. I've left my net up the bank. <laughs> So I'm going to have to let this fish run around outside there a little bit while I just back off to get the net ready. Fortunately, it's only a few feet away. I've still got the pressure on the fish. And he's been quite obliging, actually. He's staying quiet for me. Ah, oh, there's a good boy. Oh, now, now it's decided. I've got the net so it can go. Boom, boom. Look at that. Boom. That's this clear water, you know, when you've got the Polaroids on, you can see every movement they're making, feel it through the rod. Oh, this is excitement. What a way to spend a day. This morning, I must admit, I thought I was really going to struggle because of that bright sun. Oh, glorious. And that's it. Come to me. I'll get down low for this one because I haven't extended the net. There it is, over the net. Oh, another one. Wade in. That's a better fish. That is a better fish. Lovely condition. And the afternoon sun on the sides. And that's the way to end a day at Bushy Lees. Four fish from a four fish ticket. And this is my fourth fish. Absolutely beautiful. It's time to weigh the fish at the end of the day. All fishers need to know what stocks come out so they know how to restock. So rather than weigh them individually, I know this bag only weighs about two or three ounces. So I'm just gonna hang all four fish on there and take a little look at the total. And it's coming in at uh, 10 pounds four. Four fish, average weight, two and a half pounds. That's cracking, that do me. Well, what a fantastic day I've had. Bushy Lee's Fishery in Lechlade. Now this being a commercial stock fishery, you think you're gonna turn up and you're gonna catch all your fish in an hour. Didn't happen today. I had to work for my fish, try a few things out, found out what worked in the end, much more enjoyable. I don't particularly like it when you can just go and bag up in one. It's been an enjoyable day. I've had uh, a talk with the owner, Tim, who's put me straight on a few things, given me a bit of inside information, and has generally been very helpful, as were John, his manager, as well. So, if you want some more information on this beautiful fishery, go to www.letchladetrout.co.uk. There you'll get all the information you need, prices, details about corporate events, even recommended flies to use. And you can come to this lodge and have a free cup of tea when you get here, and then a great day's fishing. It was my first visit. It certainly won't be my last.